I'm Emma, one of the founding uh, directors of Chemical Underground and also a member of the Delgados. And I'm Paul, and the uh, same as Emma, founder member of the label and member of Delgados. Give me your lies, just leave out the reason A moment when it flies, but I'm tired and freezing Myself, Alan and Stuart all went to school together in Motherwell and um, it was something that we naively thought was possible when we were probably about 17. And luckily I had started working as a, a sound engineer in a local studio, so um, we got a recording free if I recorded it during the night or during the morning or whenever nobody else was in. So we recorded our first stuff and decided that we'd just, you know, just give it a go. We released our first single in 1995. I so we got involved with Bess, and that was what really catapulted the label's profile. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't think any of us could have hoped for anything like the impact that record had on the label. It's just these three three kids from Giffnock and just done the demo themselves and I ended up seeing them on the 13th of the note and just saying well, we have to go up and chat to them and uh, luckily they'd, they'd bought our first single, they knew about the label, they liked, you know, if there was any way of, of knowing what we were about from just that 7 inch then they, they picked up on it so um, they were really happy, they just said yeah that's fine we've got three songs here and just put them out. And it was as easy as that because there was no lawyers involved, there was nothing down in contract. That time when Biss had decided to do a couple of singles with us without any actual written agreement, and before we knew it, we had London lawyers backing us down the phone, um, telling us that no, we didn't have the rights to these songs. And it was, all, it was all a bit messy, but eventually we got it sorted out. We thought we were releasing maybe a couple of thousand with this single and suddenly we'd been asked to order 30,000 and it all went mad. Suddenly the label was something that people all over the country had heard of, even if just vaguely. Um, and it gave us the opportunity um, to approach other bands and then know who we were and know that there was a little bit of history now, even if we were only one year old or something like that. So Arabstrat were one of, the, one of the next bands that we actually worked with. But number one told me I shouldn't trust That's why I find unfounded doubts about Even though we're all, you know, not really that well off, we've never considered putting out a record that was a surefire hit. But actually the difference between us and another kind of record company is that the, the financial side of it is still important, we are still a business, we must um, have enough money in our bank account every day in order to pay the wages of the people that we employ, etc, etc, but it's not the domineering factor. You just can't actually tell if it's going to work, you know, like, if you could, then the majors would buy the formula and it, it, they would have every band that was going to be successful. As a company, we've that's been shown to us so so simply. I mean, the biggest selling act so far has been Mogwai, which, like they on paper, like a largely okay. instrumental um, sort of low-key band with extremely um, ferocious blasts of noise. All right, Mogwai.